What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodyB.com and in this video, we're going to look at the dial for PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at the dial for PyQt5. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships to all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at the dial. And this is a very handy little widget that you can use. You do all kinds of fun little things with it. And we're going to look at that in this video. Pretty simple to do. It uh, shouldn't take us very long, but very useful for all kinds of different things, as you'll sort of discover if you start to play around with it. So I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other PyQt5 videos in this series. So let's head over to our terminal. And you see I'm in my C PyQt5 directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on. And let's open the designer. And we've used this many times before. And we want to create a new main window. So let's hit Create. And let me kind of resize some of this stuff. This doesn't need to be that big. So let's come down here to the input widgets and look through here and we see dial right here. So I'm just going to drag and drop this thing. And you can see by default, it's very small. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, whatever. I'm try and center this a bit. Okay, so there's our dial. Now we also want a label or something so that we can output some stuff here. And we can just sort of make this bigger. And I'm going to come over here and play around with this text here. So let's come down to the size right here, font. And I don't know, make this 16 or so. That looks good. And then come down here and let's change this text to current, I don't know what position, colon, right? Something like that. And let's start it out at zero because it starts at zero right here. Uh, I'll show you how to change that to whatever you want. So, but for now, we'll leave that like that. And let's kind of move this around and move that around. All right, so let's go to form preview and just kind of See if this looks okay. Yeah, it looks okay. Maybe eh, a little there, a little there. Put this up a little, whatever. <laughs> Just sort of playing around here. All right, form, preview one more time. Oh, that looks even worse. I'll move this back down. Something like that. I don't know. Good enough. So let's come up here. Let's save this guy. Let's go file, save as. And I want to navigate into my C PyQt5 directory and let's just call this dial. And it's going to be dial.ui. So, okay, that's good. Let's head back over to our terminal here. And now we need to convert that UI file into a Python file as we always do. So let's go py uic5 x and that's going to be dial.ui. We want to dash output it and let's call this dial.python. Okay, so let's run this guy python dial.py just to make sure that all worked. Okay, looks good. Doesn't actually do anything, but we can sort of play with it and that looks good. So, all right, let's open this dial.py file in our Sublime Text Editor and play around with the code a little bit. So let's head back over here and file open. We want to navigate to our C PyQt5 directory and let's just find that dial.py file and there it is. Get rid of that stuff. Okay, so come down here and we can look through this basic starter code that we always have. And we can see here's some dial stuff. And this is usually where we would put a like clicked, you know, equals lambda, and then, you know, dial something, you know, for like clicking buttons and things. But we're not going to do that with this because we're not actually clicking it, we're kind of dragging it. And so it's just a little slightly different. So instead of doing that, what we want to do is call, uh, let's just go uh, use dial, right? So it's called self dot dial and we're calling dial because that's what we named it when we created it in the designer. Usually I change the name of things, but since there's only one dial, we'll just leave it as the default dial. So self dot dial. Now in order to use this, we need to dot value changed dot connect and then inside of this call our lambda. So that's L A M B D A. Now I know this kind of looks like a capital L that's a lowercase L sublime does that every time drives me nuts. <laughs> so now we just want to call self dot and then just any function we care to create. So I'm going to call this guy dialer. Okay, so whenever we dial the dialer, whenever we move the little thing around, this gets called because we're changing the position of the dial, we connect to our little function here. So we can come down here any old where and let's create a function. 
So I'm going to define dialer. We want to pass in self as always. Now inside of here, let's say grab the current dial position, right? So I'm just going to create a variable. I'm going to call it value, call it anything you want. And we want to set that equal to self dot dial dot value. So that's going to be the value of the dial at any given time, right? So now once we have that, we've assigned it to a variable, we can do anything we want with it. So let's say if we come up here and look, we've also got this label, we just called it label. So let's just change the label to whatever the current value is. So uh, set label text. So to do that, we just go self dot label dot set text in the way that we've always done before when changing text, right? And I can make this into an F string. And let's say current uh, value. What, what do we call that in the designer current position? Okay, so current position, colon, and then inside of here, we can pass in the string of whatever that variable is that value, which is just what we created right here. Why am I converting it to a string? Well, in order to use an F string on a text label like this, we have to make sure it's a string. So we'll just go ahead and force it to be a string. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. See if that worked. We went through that very quickly. But hopefully, zoop, as we move it around, we get to position. So it goes from, looks like zero to 99. Now we can change those numbers to anything we want several different ways. So one way, take a look at this real quick, is we can come back up here to where we defined all this stuff. And let's say set dial defaults. So we can do this, like I said, several different ways, we can set a minimum and a maximum, or we can just sort of explicitly set it. So I'll show you both ways. So, so to set a minimum, we go self dot dial dot set minimum, min -i mum, there we go. And we can set that to anything. So if I wanted to say set it to 10, I could do that. We can also go self dot dial dot set maximum. And we can set that to anything we want. So if I wanted to put this at 359 or something or 360, whatever, 360 degrees, we could do that. So let's go ahead and save this. So we can run this in. Uh oh, okay, so and we get an error. Let's see, ah, this stuff here needs to be above the value change thing. So here's where things are changing, the minimum and maximum need to go above that. So all right, let's go ahead and save this run it one more time. Won't want Okay, so now when we click it, it starts on 10, it goes all the way up to 360 because we set the min and the max. So that's one way to do it. It's sort of a very explicit way. If you only want to change one, you could do it that way. There's another way we could do it. Let me go ahead and comment out this. We could just do it explicitly on one sort of line. So let's go self dot dial dot set range. And here we could just pass in a min max. So if I go 100 and 200, for instance, it'll start on 100, it'll end on 200. So if we save this, head back over here, run this guy again, we see now it starts on 100. And it goes to 200, right? So that's handy. Uh, what else can we do? We might want to set it to be something besides zero to default. So how do we do that? Well, let's come back over here. And let me comment this out. And let's go uh, set default startup position something like that. <laughs> right? So to do that, we go self dot dial dot set value. And we can set this to anything we want, let's say we've started at 50. So now if we save this and run it, we see by default, it's pointed up at 50. And if we click on it and move it a little, we can see 51. Now notice it didn't change down here, we could programmatically change that as well if we wanted to but we don't really care about that. So okay, that's how you set the value by default. That's how you set the min and the max. Let's see what else can we do? We can add notches. That's right notches. Let me comment this out. And let's set notches. <laughs> nachos. No, not nachos notches. So to do that, we go self dot dial dot set notches visible. And we want to set this equal to true. Right, so set notches visible, that looks like it's all spelled right. We'll see. <laughs> all right, so now we get these very lovely little notches that I don't know, maybe you like that maybe you don't. But that's how you do that. It's false by default. So you don't have to do false, but you could explicitly if you had it to notches, and if you wanted to click a button to turn the notches off, 
you could then set that to false, right? So save this, run it, same deal, no more notches, right? Pretty easy. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? I think that's pretty much it. We could change the color of this thing really easily if we wanted to. I don't know why you would want to, but let's say set color. We could go self dot dial dot set style sheet. And then we want to set this and this is almost like a CSS type thing, right? You could go background dash color and set that equal to, I don't know what, say blue, something like that. So if we save this, run it, boom, now we're blue, or kind of purpley really, whatever. You can use colors, you can use hex color codes, I think. Um, I'm not sure though, let's give this a try. I don't think I've tried it with hex color codes. So let's go 377235, that's sort of a greenish color, I believe. We're on this guy again, see what this looks like. And yep, sure enough, you can use hex color codes. So Hex color codes, regular HTML color codes, like we just did, or you could just use the words blue, red, green, yellow, whatever. Uh, that works as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's the dial, pretty simple, pretty easy, very useful. You can make it any size you want. You can make it really big like this. You can make it a little, really tiny like this. If you've got like a volume knob for a mixer or something you wanna make, you would use it like that. Uh, you can use this for all different sorts of things. Once you get the value, you can do anything you want with it, right? So you could resize the app to whatever you wanted as you dialed that thing. Whatever you wanna do, zillions of different options, very useful little widget, and uh, that's really all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. It pays just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.